This is a surgery reel incision and draining simulated cyst and abscess tissue pad. This is designed to simulate an abscess and a cyst to allow drainage and then removal of the cyst. It can be removed from the packaging. And then you can palpate. It's a good idea to continue to build skills. So you can palpate here, uh, and, and this is the cystic side of the pad, and then the abscess pad. So you can feel a fluid abscess underneath. We're gonna start working on the cyst in this case, and you can remove the cyst any way that you think is best. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a scalpel blade. You can also use the scissors. My preference is to go right over the top of the cyst, although you can, if you're not sure, make an elliptical incision around the incision. So you can work this way. I think if possible, going over the top is good because that way we can maintain closure and, and won't remove too much tissue. So again, the idea is to put a little tension on the cyst or the skin over the cyst and then very carefully come in with the scalpel blade to cut down through just the first layer of the skin. We didn't get all the way through there, but we got part way. Now we can work our way back. In a perfect world, it's nice to leave the cyst intact so that we don't end up spreading whatever fluid is in the cyst throughout the tissue. At this point, we can come in with scissors and work our way around and it's also very helpful to get a pair of thumb forceps. So now that we've made the beginning of the incision, we can use thumb forceps to work our way around and use scissors to come underneath and separate the cyst using a combination of sharp and blunt dissection. You can see we've laid out one part of the cyst here. And then we can come around and work around the other side of the cyst. Our job is just very carefully work our way around the cyst. And now we've got cyst leakage. So not the worst thing in the world. It's gonna happen in many cysts. At that point we can become a little bit more aggressive and work our way around. And slowly dissect the cyst off until we can remove the cyst and move on to the next procedure. All right, so the cyst is out now uh, and we've cleaned the pocket up but we broke the cyst. If we hadn't have broken the cyst, you might be able to just close everything up, but because we did, you may want to pack it. So an option would be to take some gauze, so we can have some gauze here. And this is a little bit too thick of gauze, so we might put this in, uh, remove a portion of it, and then we can pack the cyst lining with the gauze in order to help continue to debride that cystic tissue. Uh, and we can put a stay suture over the top. So in this case, we could, we could put that gauze in. We could then put a stay suture over the top to hold it in place that we can come back and take out later. And when we remove the gauze in a couple of days. So if that were going to happen, we would take some suture and we probably just need to put one suture in here and we can move, lift up the skin because we don't want to include the gauze in our suture. So we can lift up the skin, making sure not to get any of the gauze in the suture bite. And then we can put a suture in here and we don't get those too tight because this is going to just come out in a day or so. And we'll leave the ends long in order to come back and deal with that. So with four throw square knot. A 
and then we'll leave the ends fairly long because we're going to come back and take that out later. So then the plan would be come back in a, few, in a day, typically 24 hours or so, and then we could remove this suture. And then we can remove the packing. And at that point, if everything is fine and we've cleaned everything out and we're happy with the way the bed looks, we can go ahead and suture that. And if we're not happy, then we can go ahead and repack that with gauze and come back later in 24 hours and change that. But then, once we're happy that everything has been taken care of, we can come in and close the cyst up, just using a simple interrupted end or a simple continuous pattern. You can look for those on our suture pad videos. And, and then that allows us to heal up. If we have extra tissue that we aren't happy with and we don't want to leave that behind, we can trim that and close. So one option would be to practice now doing some reconstructive surgery with this pad and to look at it and say, we've got this extra tissue here. So if I remove this extra bit in the middle of the cyst here, and then I can check the other side and see where that is. I bring those two together, that's still gonna to be too much. So I'm gonna take a little off this other side as well. So I can remove some of that tissue, come back then and close that. We can practice some of our tension relieving techniques if we think that's going to be valuable in this case. So for instance, we could use a near, far, far near in order to pull that together. Again, depending upon how much tension we think there is going to be, there's gonna be a little, so near, far, far, near. Come close. And then far. And then far. And then near. all in line so it's a nice tension relieving pattern and as much as that allows us to take some of that tension off see how that brings everything together in a nice appositional pattern so four throw square knot over the top until the tissue opposes and then we can go ahead and finish that up but the rest of it is there's no tension so we don't have to use tension relieving So you can see now that we've completely sutured the cyst. We started with a near, far, far, near suture pattern in the middle to take care of some of the tension from removing some of the tissue. I put a cruciate on this end. You can see that it ended up buckling a little, so it may have not been a good choice of a suture pattern. And then they did two interrupteds on this other side. You can see how much better that opposes. But again, the benefit of this pad is not only the ability to remove the cyst, but also to close the the hole that you leave and or pack it and come back later to do that, but gives you a lot of different steps that you can perform. The surgical incisional and drainage pad also has an abscess form. So you can see here that we've already performed the cystic removal. Now we're working on the abscess. And if you palpate the abscess, you can see that there's a lot of fluid or abscess material underneath that. So there are a number of ways to lance abscesses. Uh, one is to go straight down into it. So we're going to have done some local anesthetic around this. And then we're gonna go, we can go straight down in. And that may well be the easiest way to start with. The problem is that you, you sometimes can't control the point of your scalpel blade and you get into the deeper tissues. So I actually prefer to use the bevel of the blade. So put some tension on the tissue, use the bevel of the blade, work our way in, and again, we know this is an abscess, and so we're not worried about getting into it. That's our whole goal. And there you can see the abscess material coming out. So once we have done that, we can clean that, and then what we want to do is make sure that we make the abscess plenty big. So there's choices of either continuing on with the scalpel blade, but again, the concern here is that we have to be careful of the deeper tissues. 
think we're generally better off coming in with the scissors, putting one arm of the scissors into the abscess pocket and opening, and then we can go the other way, go the other direction and open that up. Because the most important thing with an abscess is to make sure that we have opened things wide so that we can clean it out. So in this case, you can appreciate there's all the abscess material within the abscess, and we're going to use then gauze and or lavage to clean that area out. And once we've cleaned it all out, we've got a nice healthy bed of tissue that you can see here. And then we're going to just debride anything that's inside that we need to take care of. And these are going to be left open to drain. If you're concerned about them closing up, you can actually take your scissors and, and go ahead and remove some of the superficial tissue so that we don't have to worry about these sealing back up until they've healed in from the bottom. And there's the incisional and drainage material. Again, cysts we're typically going to be able to close, abscesses we typically don't.